I mean, you look at it and you just go, okay, from my perspective, like Eric July surrounds himself uh, with yes men, sycophants. I know people say that. that, that happens when you're kind of popular, but you still need to be able to listen to criticism. And Eric got some criticism from Dick Masterson and he fucking lost his mind. He flipped his lid. And uh, I said to him, I said, look, I know that that was painful. I know that you don't like Dick Masterson, but uh, the stuff that he said was pretty smart. And, you know, maybe you should listen to some of the problems. It's criticism. The best criticism does come from people who uh, dislike you and want to take you down because uh, they're not going to give you criticism that's bad. They're not going to sit there and say, you know what you should do is just kill your main character. No, most of the time, and if they do say that, you recognize it as useless. But when they're sitting there, you know, talking about your story structure and saying you don't know how to write a story because, uh, you know, this, this, and this, uh, you know, the character lacks motivation, uh, you never really make any choices, everything is vague, you, your plot lines meander, like nothing's going on here. Like, it'd be wise to listen to that, even though it's coming from someone who you dislike. I am not someone that you dislike. Listen to me. I'm telling you that that's good criticism. But instead of just listening to me, he decided to send me a text message accusing me of disloyalty <laughs> and saying there would be consequences if I continued to disagree with him publicly. And then he just started getting weird. I, from there, it just all started to unravel. He started to DMCA strike people who posted images making fun of his comic. Parodies uh, received disrespect. DMCA strikes. Everything that you can do to stop people from criticizing you and making fun of you. This is just not the way that we work around here. Some guy shows up, tapes money to the front door of his warehouse. He, he lost his mind. Eric lost his mind and said, I, I'm, he, he basically threatened to kill that guy. If you watch that, it, it really appeared like Eric was saying, you come back here, I'm going to air you out, or I have every right to air you out here in Texas, or something like that. A lot of people took that as like, hey, you're threatening to kill that guy. And then the, the, your fans were saying that they had the right to kill you, or to kill that guy. It's just fucking weird. He was just a jokester. He's a prankster. Practical joke. It happens. Well, the more famous you get, the more popular you get, the more you're going to get kind of, uh, you're going to get people who uh, want to parody you, make fun of you. You got to learn to roll with it. And the thing about it is, is that in my opinion, ISOM number one sucks. I reviewed it. I read it twice. I've now reviewed it. It isn't a good comic. It does It's not the end of the world. It's just not a good comic. And I think you establish, like Eric established himself to like be like the savior of the industry. You know, I'm not going to let the comic book industry go down in flames. I'm not going to sit and let this happen. And as it turns out, like it's not so easy. It isn't so easy to make a comic book. And all these guys who are criticizing comics cannot do better. They're not capable of doing better. They, you know, they want to sit there and, um, uh, create drama, farm drama, shit on Marvel and DC. And listen, I'm all for that. But you know what? Stay a critic. When you actually get into the arena and try to make a comic yourself, you're going to embarrass yourself. I mean, that's the situation. Uh, everybody around him is gaslighting him because it seems like they just want to, like, leech from him, get clout from him, get money from him. Uh, listen, I uh, myself was very protective of this guy because he shares an audience with me. A lot of you guys like him. I don't want to fight with him. It's like, it's fucking, it's a disaster. I got people like very uh, upset now, but my principles about how art needs, art is, art grows from criticism uh, and therefore we must be receptive to criticism. These are stances that I have taken and I will dig my heels in on. I can't adjust that. I got to stand my ground on that. It's important. It's the fundamental. It's the foundation. These are fundamentals that we cannot, we cannot move from. We can't do it just because somebody else doesn't like to hear it. You got tons of videos. You're lecturing everybody about how to be a good businessman. I'm not really seeing good business. I'm seeing that you build a good shipping company. How to make great comics. I haven't seen a great comic. And I think it's going to come down to this year, how to make great comics back off and let other people do them. Which is a lesson that would have 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, let other people make the comics. Uh, not everybody can do this. It's ridiculous. So that's where all of this trouble comes from. And since then, I got a lot of people saying, you align with shitty people, people who are Eric July critics. Well, you know, listen, I don't align with anybody. I'm a solo artist. <laughs> Look at me here. I'm a solo artist. I don't, I don't sit there and go, I'm going to get in line with this guy. This guy's going to be my leader. I don't do that. I tell the truth. I have my opinions here. I have my standards, my ideas, based on decades of being a comic book creator. And uh, I stand by those. i got to stand by those. These amateurs that come out of nowhere uh, and uh, want to <laughs> want to tell people how it is. It is how it is. No, we're gonna have we're gonna have some disagreements. Disagreements are mostly healthy, so I think that's okay, and we can have some disagreements. Anyway, uh, this is where we are now. I think anything that I say is going to be disagreed with by Eric July. So me sitting there yesterday and saying, uh, "Hey, listen, uh, John Dillard, who is a the artist." Uh, for uh, Yellow Flash's upcoming comic book, which looks like Power Rangers set in World War II. Uh, John Dillard is saying that he has not been paid for the work that he's done uh, for six months. And I don't think that's right. I don't, I've never heard of a business arrangement like that. And it doesn't matter what John Dillard agreed to. You gave him a binary choice of a little bit of money now or a lot of money later, potentially. Uh, and he decided to be a gambler. <laughs> I don't think it was a good idea. So uh, that's my stance on this. Now, here comes Eric July, uh, who's decided he is, of course, going to disagree with me. He's going he's gonna to tell me how business should be run. Uh, so, by the way, John Dillard, who is not, he's like, all of this is true. I am part owner of the book. I consider Flash and I to be business partners. This is just fucking Stockholm Syndrome. What is he going to do? He's six months into it. People are, sh are sharing this with me and saying, see, it's okay that he's being exploited. He's agreed to be exploited. I don't agree with John Dillard agreeing to be exploited. I don't think that's something that should happen to him. How he feels about it is irrelevant. That cannot be allowed to go on and go forward, especially not on these high-end gigantic projects sitting there going no i know i'm you know i'm being exploited but i agreed to it i this is uh, this is it's not his responsibility he did offer to help multiple times he should not be offering to help you you are drawing his comic book you are helping him without you there is no comic book there is no potentially 40 percent of whatever the fuck it's all you dillard you deserve to be paid. This is bullshit. You are being exploited. It doesn't matter if you've agreed to it. The reason why it was a bad idea, maybe you're seeing that now, is because life happens. Your house was flooded. You're in a trailer uh, in the backyard currently while your house is being... This is why. If you had an income, six months worth of comic book pages might have been able to uh, make a, a better difference. You would have been good. Now, here's Eric July disagreeing with me saying these things. Let me just see. I haven't read this yet. <laughs> this is intriguing, he says. Is it? Is this a matter of intrigue for you? Uh, I love to talk about the economics of comics, so I figured I would chime in. I got nothing but love and respect for Flash. Do you? You respect Yellow Flash? Eric. Do you seriously respect Yellow Flash? You love him? You have respect for, for that guy? See, it doesn't, this is all like, it's all kind of YouTuber influencer behavior. If Yellow Flash had 20,000 followers, would you still love and respect Yellow Flash? He's got 450,000. I love and respect him. Okay. Uh, and Dillard was our second place winner of the ISOM number two fan art contest. You know why? Because he's trying to get somewhere. That's why Dillard is trying to make some money and become a comic book artist that makes money. Let me first start by saying it was screwed up 
that people tried to weaponize Dillard's financial situation. Now, hold on, asshole. Hold on a second. The reason why we're talking about Dillard's financial situation is because it only exists because Yellow Flash isn't paying him. And the reason why Yellow Flash isn't paying him is because he is, well, number one, maybe he doesn't have the money to pay him. I don't know. But here's, what, here's why it's relevant to me. He's buying into and promoting your ideas about how crowdfunding is hanging on to the people's money. And this is the new model. My model is to make the books and then sell the books and use the money I already have to make the books and sell the books and pay my peeps. And that's what I'm doing. And Yellow Flash, by the way, everybody goes, you're making books and you're selling them to us on time? That's great. Meanwhile, they're just shit. And here, like Yellow Flash is buying into that now. Yellow Flash thinks the future of indie comics is the way we made mainstream comics. He's bought into this whole diatribe. And so, you know who's paying for that? Not Yellow Flash. Dillard is paying for that. <laughs> That's who's paying for it. You know who's paying for these ideals? The little guy. All of this stuff about, you know, uh, late books, crowdfunding being, uh, you know, mo crowdfunding, uh, Eric July making fun of crowdfunding. You know who's paying for that? The little guy. The guy who actually needs to get a paycheck. These guys, where the comic book is just kind of like something else that they're another kind of piece of YouTuber merch that they've written and now they're, they're, they're hiring artists. These guys aren't paying the brunt of that. The idea that crowdfunding uh, might become less popular because Eric July is making it uh, look like it's a scam. You know who's going to pay for that? The little guy who can't afford to make a comic book but actually has a good idea with good characters. That's who's going to pay for that. So uh, convenient for everybody here. Uh, okay, not because they cared about Dillard, solely to attack Flash. Exactly correct. I'm not a big fan of Dillard. I don't know Dillard. I just saw him on a video uh, saying that he was working on a comic book by Flash, the asshole that was currently attacking crowdfunding, and me. So you're quite right. I did it entirely to attack Flash and say, what the fuck is the matter with you? And if the fact that it helped Dillard, and I think it will help Dillard, uh, is a good thing. They, that roped him into some BS, and I'm glad he cleared the record. He didn't clear any record. <laughs> but let's talk money and ownership. He didn't clear any record. He said, yes, I've agreed to be a slave. You realize you're a slave? Yes, but Massa treats me real well. <laughs> I agreed to this. <laughs> My father worked on this plantation. So do I. This is what I know. Okay. <laughs> he cleared the air. He he just kind of came out and said, I, no, this is what I agreed to. Bullshit. Uh, that roped him into some BS. I'm glad he cleared the record. But let's talk about money and ownership. As I'm assuming all of this is true, I have zero insider knowledge. Yeah, sure. Why do you have to say that? You do have insider knowledge. Uh, and they own the book, Property and Publishing 6040. This is a ballsy move by Dillard. And I respect it. Son of a bitch. Can you believe this? This is ballsy. I, I respect an artist. I respect an artist who's going to go do work for us for free. For promise of money on the back end. That is ballsy. That takes balls, boy. Hey, you got them big old balls. Respect. It's like when somebody gives him like a $500 super chat. I respect that. <laughs> a, why do people buy into this shit? Why do people buy into this? You respect this? He can't pay his bills, Eric. I respect this ballsy move by John Dillard. I do too. I respect it. You know what? Anybody who wants to come work for All Caps Comics for free, 
with vague promises about 40% on the back end. Well, 40% of what? Like, is it like 40% after pro who decides what profit is like how? No, 40%. Anybody who's willing to come work for me for free, I respect you. I know it might sound self serving. When I say that me as the employer, as the guy who is uh, who stands to make money off of your labor, and it is a lot of labor. Making a comic book is a lot of fucking labor. It takes a long time. I just want to let you know that if you're willing to work for free, respect. You've got balls. <laughs> this is the guy, by the way, who says, I don't want to make toys in China because of the sweatshops. Oh, yeah? But you're going to let Dillard work in a sweatshop? <laughs> for yellow flash you respect him i respect those chinese uh, sweatshops that's a ballsy move respect respect to the chinese to the chai -coms. Hmm. uh here's this question but isn't it an artist's responsibility not to accept backends um yes it is. Dillard should not have accepted this. But you know what? Yellow Flash shouldn't have offered it. It was exploitative. When you say to him, I'm going to give you a little bit of money up front, or you can have 40% on the back end, that's your choice. That is an exploitative deal. That is a creepy deal. That's not the way any of this works. Shouldn't be. You have to understand. It takes time to make a comic. And while these artists are making the comic book for you, you need to make sure that their bills are being paid. So you pay them by the page. It's a little carrot and the stick kind of proposition too. Give me another page and I'll give you a bite of the carrot. Let's go. That's kind of how it works. Yes, it is his responsibility to say no. But you know what? The fact that he didn't say no does not acquit Yellow Flash or Eric July of supporting this uh i respect it instead of having flash take a hundred percent of the ownership and paying him in the form of a commission he's waiving that to take 40 percent. is this risky yes but if this reaches anywhere anything near the potential he's going to make far more money assuming that's the split it won't take long at all for him to make what he would have made on commission while also maintaining ownership Bullshit. This is just fucking, this is snake oil bullshit. How about this instead of that, Eric? Would it not be superior to give him both? This is like fucking Amway. This is Amway. Oh, how are you going to go? Okay, here we go. I've seen some people say, but he should have been given an advance, which makes zero sense and is only being brought up because of Dillard's situation, which he rightfully acknowledges is completely irrelevant to business. Guys, if you still support Eric July after this, I don't know what to say. This is some slimy, schemy shit. This is some bullshit. This is Yellow Flash's comic book. It's his idea. It's his IP. The legal entanglement of putting Yellow Flash and John Dillard on the same plane of ownership is already going to fail. It's already doomed to fail. There's no possible way that that's going to work out. When it comes to these business deals here, these arrangements, when it comes to making a comic book, there has to be one owner and one freelancer. One guy who's working for hire and one owner. Now, it's going to be a tremendously successful book, we all assume, but there's still one owner. This is Yellow Flash's risk. It's not John Dillard's risk. Him sharing Yellow Flash's risk is not appropriate. You take the risk with me too. You're going to be working. If Yellow Flash, if this book doesn't make any money, you know what happens to Yellow Flash? He loses an afternoon's worth of work. He wrote a gay story. He handed it off to Dillard. Yellow Flash, he can't even read. You think he can write a story? So he's got Dillard drawing the story that he wrote. And if Yellow Flash fails, what is his risk in this? Nothing. He just blew an afternoon. 
but you've assigned John Dillard the equal amount of risk, Eric. And he has to draw the fucking comic book. And all of us know, except for you, how difficult it is to make a comic book. It takes time to draw a comic book. It takes effort. Not everybody, and John Dillard, by the way, doesn't trace 3D assets. Now listen, if John Dillard wanted to say, you know what? I'm going to make this comic book for you. I'm just going to run a bunch of fucking 3D assets through a filter and call it a comic book art. It fooled Eric. It, it'll probably fool Yellow Flash too. Then that might be a thing. Then John Dillard has put an equal amount of energy and risk into this as Yellow Flash and vice versa. But John Dillard sits there with a piece of paper and a pen and he's got to fucking draw every single day. Every day of fucking drawing another panel. It's work. It's a ton of work. I respect you. I respect you for not asking to be paid up front for any of this. I respect you for letting your family starve so that Yellow Flash can make YouTuber merch, some vanity comic. Respect, man. Respect from Yellow Respect from Yellow Flash. I love and respect Yellow Flash. And also respect to the guys, to the artists who are willing to let their families fucking starve so that we can make YouTuber merch. That's respect. Respect from Eric July. Eric, shut the fuck up, dude. You are not a creative person. You do not know. You are somebody who sits in your warehouse and helps ship out packages to people. And good for you. But don't you gaslight this guy. Don't you give him praise because he's sitting there suffering because he made some stupid back-end deal? With yellow flash? You think this is going to last? This comic book was supposed to be solicited. Not solicited. It was supposed to be crowdfunded in October. That's what he was told. He was told, we're going to start making money in October. Presumably, there would be money at that point. Start crowdfunding in October, two months. That means December by Christmas. Dillard would have had 40% of his money. He'd have it in his hands. Instead, the crowdfund hasn't even fucking began yet. His kids didn't have Christmas, and Dark Gift had to send him a Christmas tree and some presents. Respect. I respect you for taking this risk. You understand? If the book had launched in October, October, November, December, boom, big pile of money in Yellow Flash's lap, and then Dillard can rest easy. But it hasn't. It hasn't launched. Probably because people like you are sitting there telling uh, other people, telling the entire internet, that crowdfunding is a scam. And because of that bullshit, Yellow Flash believes you. He's a wet brain. He's a retard. He doesn't understand that you're retarded too. And because of that, his kids didn't have Christmas. It's not, he doesn't have to share the risk. You know what he does instead of sharing Yellow Flash's risk? He does the work. I just like to talk about business, so I think I'm going to drop my two cents in here. Here's the thing, I don't give a shit about Yellow Flash, I don't give a shit about you. But I'm sitting here looking at Dillard here. I'm not a fan. I'm not trying to save Dillard. I'm not trying to virtue signal on behalf of Dillard, but this isn't right. And so far, everything that you've said about business and comics has been bullshit, except these late books need to come out on time. We agree. Late books should come out on time. That's great. It's fantastic. You're not going to get an argument from too many people there. Telling people that they should take these ridiculous, vague back end deals while they invest at least six months into a project that may or may never come out, while their families suffer, that's shameful. By the way, thank you, Dark Gift, for actually providing. These guys are like, no, Dillard's doing fine. He's doing fine. What's he going to do now? Is he going to turn on Yellow Flash? Look what happens. I didn't turn on Yellow Flash at all. He turned on me. And then what's going to happen if John Dillard says, yeah, man, this is really a fucked up situation? 
Yellow Flash is going to probably turn on Dillard, isn't he? Fire him from his work, from his job. He's going to lose all the work that he put into this. He has no choice. You put him in a situation where Yellow Flash has all the power and he has no power. He's sharing an extraordinary amount of risk by doing this project without getting paid. I repeat to you, if you have any decency at all, any, pay him. Count the number of pages that he's done. Send him between four and $500 per page. Send him a paycheck. You can eliminate it from the 40% that he's getting at the end. When the money comes in, you say, this is your 40%. I've already paid you this much money. Subtract it, pay him the rest. That's the only decent thing to do. And gassing him up and pretending that he's getting some kind of respect from Eric July by letting his family suffer at a time when they, uh, things are hard. I mean, look, hardships come fast. You never know when they're happening. He didn't know six months ago that his house was going to flood. But it is. It's flooded. Sometimes your allies are wrong. Sometimes the people who have allied with you are doing something that's wrong. I'm not saying you need to point that out. You can mind your own business if you want to. But actually making an argument like that, it's fucked up. Now that we've done this, why don't you act like Fred Sanford again? Oh my God, I'm telling, I'm telling guys with families that are starving that they shouldn't eat. Oh, help me, Elizabeth. <clears throat> why you fall out of your chair? Why don't you break your chair again? I'm telling, I'm telling Dillard that he doesn't need to eat. His family has to starve and they don't get Christmas, Elizabeth. Ah! Let's see another video like that, you clown. Don't stand by this. Jesus fucking Christ. Why do I have to be the one to do this? And then I get pushback from people. I actually get pushback from people who have power and influence. <laughs> so stupid. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I am Ethan Van Skyver, 31-year veteran of the comic book industry, somebody who pays my artists, including my sculptors. People who come to me and they say, if I come to, if I come to somebody and say, I'd like you to make a Cyberfrog statue for me, Cyberfrog action figure that I'd like to make, look at this, great job that he did. Uh, I pay them regardless of whether or not I can afford to make it, I do it because I use crowdfunding, but they get paid. Um, they get paid. I already paid for my Rainbow the Brute sculpture by the same artist. He already made it for me. Um, whether or not that funds, he is not the one taking the risk. He got paid already. I paid him for the sculpture. Some people do not pay their sculptors. They have a fanciful idea that they might want to make a sculpture of a beautiful, sexy woman with ice powers. And the sculpture gets made. And then some people, two, maybe not many, disappear on them. Four-figure paycheck doesn't materialize. And I don't want to say too much. I, all I want is I want this guy to receive his money. So uh, I don't want to get too much into that. I just would like to check with him and go, did you get paid? And I'd like him to say, yeah, thanks. I did get paid. We're not all sharing risk with creative people. We can't do that. You, you, you make a comic book for me. You make a cyber frog toy for me. Uh, you make something for me. I'm gonna. I'm, I gotta pay you. If I don't pay you enough, let me know. If I miss a paycheck, let me know. If I miss something, let me know. I'll pay you right away. Paid <laughs> is getting paid in respect better than getting paid in exposure. <laughs> I think so, man. <laughs> 